All right, next we're going to take a look at the data analysis and uh, processing, data collection and processing section of the lab report. So uh, here's back to my little sample I was showing you before. Um, using the template, there's a table, aim, hypothesis, variables uh, with all the units, the how and the why, list of materials and the method that kind of makes the planning. And then now we look at the results, data analysis, what can be done for something like this. So uh, let's take a look at what I have written here. Records appropriate quantitative and associate qualitative raw data, including units and uncertainties where relevant. And there's a few tips to take a, take a look at down here. This is pretty easy to get max points, but for some reason students always forget one tiny simple thing here or there, and so they end up getting this partial. This is one of the most common um, boxes that's checked off as partial. You're really aim, aiming for a complete. Um, most of these are not too hard to get the complete one. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about what, which one of these criteria are difficult to get complete, but definitely for recording raw data and processing the data, um, it should be relatively easy to get a complete level if you follow these guidelines. So a little quick um, acronym is TUS, like teeth, T-U-U-S, title, units, uncertainties, and significant figures. Um, what can I say about them? Well, you have to have all units, obviously. Include uncertainties. This is not something that's very difficult for biology to include this at the top of the table. Um, if you're, you're, it's basically half of the smallest unit of the tool that you're using. If I'm using a ruler where the smallest unit is a, the smallest division is a millimeter, then I'm going to record the nearest millimeter and then plus, and then next to it I'm going to write plus or minus 0 0.5 millimeters. There's no 0 0.5 division markings on a millimeter ruler, or at least not the ones that I have. So it's always half of the smallest unit. If you're using a scale to measure mass and it goes to point zero, two decimal places, uh, point um, zero 0.05, for example, and you measure something to be 4.05 on a scale, then you would write 4.05. But above, you would make a note that you've measured um, to plus or minus 0 0.005. That's half of the smallest um, unit that actually gets measured on the particular device. So check out some of these examples and in the other lab as well too, but that shouldn't be too hard. Same goes for temperature, thermometer readings, anything. Whatever tool you're using, it's half of the smallest uh, unit, half of the smallest division that you can actually identify on there. Keep the significant figures consistent, so don't round some things to one decimal place, round some things to three, three decimal places. If you have something that's exactly three, but everything else is rounded to two decimal places or three significant figures, then make sure to put 3.00, even though it's understood that it's three. Can you understand the experiment just by looking at the table? That's a nice tip. Um, Usually, that's a fast track way. Check out the aim. Go look at the data table. Can you figure out what the experiment was about just by looking at the at the data table? If all the information is there, you should be okay. All right. Processing the data. Well, let's go take a look over here. So results. She has a title. Uh, a title here. She could have used the actual symbol for plus or minus. Please find that in your word processor here. Beats per minute, she forgot the plus or minus in this particular situation here, so we need that for uncertainty, so we can't give a full mark for that. And she does have everything rounded to the same number of significant figures. It's very easy, easy to understand. If she could have included the average at the end of this table, it doesn't matter how you format it, as long as all the information is there. So all the information is there, so that's okay. All right, processing the raw data. So just having all these numbers here alone by themselves is not enough. She's processed it by calculating an average. That's okay. I guess technically that counts as processing, but um, usually we've been advised or I've been reluctant to give full marks just for calculating an average. It's not very sophisticated. So calculating an average, perhaps a standard deviation. In this situation, the student has done a t-test as well. So doing any kind of t-test or chi-square test, you'll learn about this later, cannot simply be plotting raw data, show as much work as is necessary. So here, let's see what we have here. Uh, t-test calculated, 
and she said specifically which two categories she is using to compare. Um, a summary of the actual statistics, the values, the important values that are used in the t-test is included here and she's actually made a separate table so we can compare uh, that information here. It would be nice if she also included maybe in the appendix the actual table of critical values and identified which one she was using so I can easily tell that she's identified the correct degrees of freedom, etc. But the point is here, you have to do something to process the data to get complete and usually any kind of statistical test is fine, provided that, remember, you've actually collected enough data. You can't do a t-test on something where you haven't actually repeated any trials. Of. Finally, the presentation is very, very important here. Presentation um, error bars. If you've done five trials, if you've done five trials, then you should be able to do error bars. And the error bars should be able to show your standard deviation. So for each one of these, uh, an average can be calculated, and the calculator can easily spit out a standard deviation for each of these. She has not done that here, but highly recommended that you do that. Um, Hand drawing is okay, unless you really know how to use Excel. If you use Excel, don't don't make sure you're not just using the standard line. It's going to connect all the dots, not the way that you want. Make sure you know how to do that. I've made another video uh, somewhere that explains how to do that, but it takes quite a few more steps. Hand drawing is fine for now, but if you want to take it a step further, but make sure you really know how to use the software, uh, you can go ahead and use the computer to do that as well, too. All right, check that out. What else? Presentation-wise, everything's pretty clear here. The tables are clear. She's using lines. There's titles, uncertainties. All the units are there. I can see where the t-test is starting. Um, anything else here? Is there a graph? Okay, so she's included a graph here, hand-drawn, and these error bars, she, she needs to say that these are actually uh, error bars showing standard deviation. That's what I'm, I'm assuming they are. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to look at your patterns, draw a line or curve of best fit. And it gives us an idea about your accur accuracy. We can also talk about that in the conclusion and evaluation section there. So I think that's about it for data processing and collection. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Go ahead and post them. All right.